Hi everybody, I'm David and I'm here today to share with you an overview of our system that's the new conveyor demo in Mechatronics. And the system is fascinating because it, it converges uh, PLC functionality as well as embedded microcontrollers and the conveyor system and industrial robotics. So the components of the video will go as follows. We have the, uh, the documentation for the whole system overall. Um, the safety uh, comments and how the power is routed throughout the system. Um, where to find the CAD files for the PLC controller as well as the other brackets. Um, programming the PLC, which we do with productivity blocks. The program breakdown um, and the sequence of the program. Then going into how the pins are mapped. Uh, that is, the pins are mapped from the software to the hardware. <coughs> Then um, compiling the C++ code, which we, we produce C from productivity blocks, and we'll upload the code to the PLC with Arduino. We're gonna go into sensors, where we look at the uh, distance sensor functionality and the connections between the sensor and the Arduino board. Then we'll go into the Arduino software, where we look at the tabs, the, uh, the distance sensor program routine, and where to find all of those files as well so that you can basically reproduce the project after you've seen this video and you have access to the resources. All the documentation is found here at this GitHub repository and uh, the best place to start is by opening the documentation folder and going to these slides that contain um, not only the slides that I refer to here in this video but also other wiring diagrams and um, code, descriptions, and logic tables that describe how the demo works so that you can reverse engineer everything that you'd like to work on. The power comes into the system for this demo, all starting with this e-stop, which is a push-pull type. There's no switching. Uh, there's no rotating. Uh, the power is coming from the wall at 120 volts, and it passes through this e-stop first, and then it comes over to the power switch here. Um, and you should see no LED there and no LED on these other two modules, the conveyor module and the power supply for 24 volts. Then when we activate, uh, we pull this, then we have 120 volts going back to this. And um, the two cables come over to our uh, system on the left and then the third cable or more goes to the UR robot or second UR robot. So let me trace the power into, uh, first of all, 120 volts is coming into this uh, Dorner conveyor controller, and that's powering this stepper motor and driving the conveyor. Then secondly, we have 120 volts um, neutral at white and hot on the black line coming into this 24 volt power supply. And if this light comes on, that means the power is active coming in, and then you have 24 volts coming out of there and going into these junctions. The way this is laid out, uh, you can notice this uh, horizontal tab that's bridging all the connectors on uh, this block and this horizontal tab bridging all these connectors. So you have ground on the left and hot uh, 24 volts on the right. And let me back up a second. When you come uh, from here, we are immediately grounding everything uh, coming in to this uh, actual steel frame. So the, uh, the green wire is the ground wire and it goes into this terminal block that's uh, blended green and yellow. And that block is actually grounded to the DIN rail itself. So after you get 24 volts coming into your power uh, blocks, then you have 24 volts that one, powers up the P1AM system and two, it powers this uh, 24 volt output module and those are separately separately passed. So this is the, the pair of cables going to the AM, uh, P1 AM, and this is the input voltage going into the module that it's driving. Outcoming from the P1 AM system, these, uh, these blocks are all tied together and you have a five volt um, access to source five volts from the left side on these two pins where green is ground, blue is five volts, and we're bridging that over to power and ESP. In the end, the ESP uh, is only operating as a, uh, as a sensor 
that gives input to the system and it's getting its power from here. If you unplug the ESP, then it should get unplugged um, from, this, uh, from this side of the connector so that you're isolating the power from the wires right away. Uh, now we can come back over here. The other place where this 24 volts goes is indirectly to the relay system. So the relay is tied with a common ground to the same ground as the other components uh, through this black wire. And then the signals outgoing from this digital 24 volt module send on these black wires to the input zero and one in order to drive the relays zero and one. Then those make the contact on these wires. These wires are not part of the, the power system. And when you do something like uh, activate this switch, like changing the condition, then this is when the, uh, the P1 AM responds because it's listening to the switch. It outputs to this module. This module outputs to the relay, and then you see the LED come on. Then you see this light come on, and you see the conveyor moving. If we replace the, the can here, then it all stops. If you want to find the CAD models for a component, then you need to go to the individual components product page on Auto Automation Direct, and then you'll find this button here called 3D CAD, and that button takes you down to the bottom of the page. You can select any file type you want and download it, but uh, then you're gonna need to fill out this form. So you can skip that and just uh, do with the STP model, which is very compatible. When you click here, it'll download right away. And then um, that's definitely compatible with SolidWorks and you can just save the file up here as a solid part. The CAD models for our assembly, including the soda can rack and including the distance sensor rack here, are found linked from the GitHub. You can come down here under CAD models and you can find uh, these links to GrabCAD. That'll take you here on GrabCAD and you can click load in 3D viewer for the assemblies. Make sure it has the parts that you're looking for and then you can download the files uh, inside of here. The step files or um, SolidWorks files will be available. After installing productivity blocks, then start by opening Arduino, then make yourself a new file so that you do not end up overwriting your old file. Um, I'll show you the point where this could happen. So we go to tools, we go to uh, productivity blocks, and then open up the file that you're interested in. In our case, we have the conveyor demo. This is where you'll see the, the graphical uh, version of your file and you can do verify but before you verify go into Arduino because this will be used to verify change your board to P1AM100 and when you click verify this code is going to generate a C++ version of the code and it will ask you to save it as something so we're going to call it um, conveyor test And all of the functions in this code are the corresponding actions, uh, the corresponding C++ code to these functions over here. And then when you upload, that's when it will get transferred over to the P1AM system. But first it has to be plugged in. Our program written in productivity blocks essentially fulfills the conditions here in the truth table regarding the rack being full, the object being near, and then it moves on to the conveyor actions about which direction will it go and will it go or stop. So let's look at the yellow blocks here in our program. So uh, below the first pink line, which is a comment, we have the conditions being verified. We check the inputs to the P1AM system, and then we're gonna set a, rack, um, a flag low or high. The rack full flag will be set low under one, under one condition of the switch, and the rack full will be, flag will be set high under the other condition. And the same is taking place for the object near or the object not near. Then we move on to the actions. The conveyor actions are essentially just dependent on the outputs of the 24 volt module that we attached to our P1AM system. 
So we're sending ones or zeros, and though those will um, subsequently drive the conveyor to uh, go or stop. So the way that looks in our productivity block system is we're going to set point if the rack full flag is high, we'll set this point to be low. And the comments here indicate the conveyor will stop. And the other conditions are regarding uh, slot 1.2. We're going to set that low. These green blocks and their, uh, their other details are essentially just setting the outputs of that 24 volt module. And then we, we accommodate all of the conditions that we want to accommodate. One nuance about productivity blocks that you'll notice is sometimes we're talking about get point with just a pin number, and there's other occasions where we set point or get point having a slot and a point uh, indicated by the user. Here's the difference in those two. When we just talk about pin numbers, we're talking about the pins that are directly tied to the P1AM controller inside of this plastic box. So those are referring to the pins in this terminal block here on the left side of the P1AM unit. That means pin D2 that's referenced in our productivity blocks program here will correspond to pin D2 or pin two on this terminal block. Then when we move to the right side of the P1AM, we refer to the modules as slots. So the first slot will be the first module on the right side of the P1AM and we have only one slot here, but you can expand them with uh, as many modules as you like. So you'll see in the Productivity Blocks program that we have a command to set the point of slot 1.1. That's going to refer to this 24 volt output module, the point 0.1 uh, contact in the slot. A few notes about the directionality of this process. When you adapt the uh, Productivity Blocks program, you export to the .ino file, which is a C++ file, um, automatically upon verifying or uploading. And when you verify the program, you have this here that's able to be customized by you. If you would like to say, uh, my comment, if you would like to add comments, change variable names, or completely change the program, you can do that but you cannot re-export the INO file from the Arduino um, workspace over to productivity blocks. It's a one-way process. So if I want to save <clears throat> my customized file, I can do file save as, and then it's going to say conveyor test custom. And if I save that on the desktop, just like any other Arduino uh, folders, you need to have the folder that's going to be automatically generated with the same name as your main.ino file. The other thing that you cannot do with productivity blocks is upload directly from productivity blocks to your unit. So if I make a change here and I want to verify it or I want to upload it, then just know that when you click verify or you click upload, it's going to overwrite whatever file you have open currently. And so if conveyor test custom had your comments written in it, those comments are going to be deleted as soon as you click verify or if you click upload. Upload here is the same meaning as upload um, on the Arduino IDE where the clicking this button will first verify the code by compiling it and then try to send it out to, um, to the P1AM system over the COM port. Lastly, when you save your Arduino file, it does not save the productivity blocks file. So if you make a change here, you will see the little star here, meaning the file has not been saved. And if you close the Arduino IDE, then it's gonna close both and you will lose your saved changes. Let's look at the anatomy of the Arduino code that's running this uh, ESP8266 or Node MCU, which is reading from the distance sensor. 
The circuit looks like this, where we've attached the distance sensor over the I2C bus to the node MCU. And the node MCU is the one that's running the C++ program to loop by measuring the distance and um, blaring the buzzer in the case that the distance is near and also outputting a signal on the GPIO pins that can be read um, by the input pins of the P1AM system. So overall, when this can comes down onto the conveyor and it comes in proximity to the distance sensor, we have a threshold where if the can is near, then we're gonna take actions from the ESP8266. This image shows how the VL53 sensor is connected to the I2C bus on our node MCU and also how the buzzer is connected. And when we come uh, back to the image of the overall setup, you can see that we've remote mounted the VL sensor, but it's still connected in the exact same way as when it's directly mounted on the board here where you can plug it into the female header pins that I've soldered on. A disclaimer here that I'm not a C++ expert and I have some habits that may not be customary. Um, for example, we, when we start up this code, it has three tabs. I like to separate the buzzer functions and the VL53 sensor functions with, uh, away from the main tab. And I name them both with the .h uh, because if, they're, if they have the .h file extension, then I can control the, the sequence in which I include them and that will control in turn the other includes of libraries that we need. Um, and I like to have that control because sometimes the tabs have overlapping uh, requirements. So this is the, the main um, file that determines the behavior of this code. So we essentially set up the buzzer after starting the serial communications. Um, we set up the VL sensor. And by the way, the serial communications only used for debugging because once it's placed on the rack here, um, it doesn't have any ability to communicate over serial to the user. That's only um, talking to your, your laptop or your PC while you're running. Then uh, we set a, a output pin for pin D4, which is going to um, communicate to the buzzer, uh, sorry, to the P1AM. Then in our loop, we establish a, a my distance, which is in, me, in millimeters. It takes the distance read by the VL sensor. And then um, for every loop, it always resets the output pin to be low. And this is the, the D4 output pin, which is being read by um, the P1AM system as an input here on this green terminal block. So we come back here and we have a couple of if statements. If the distance is not zero, um, the distance, if the distance is zero, that the range, the item measured could be very far away and it will return a zero because it's out of range. So we want to toss that out. And then when you say, if the distance is, uh, if the obstacle is detected because, so everything here is the main functionality of the ESP device in this conveyor demo. So let's run through it really quickly. We have two integers to declare the distance that we discover and the trigger distance, which is 10 centimeters. And then we have a flag uh, for use later in the loop. First in our setup loop, we uh, start the serial communication. We set up the buzzer uh, using functions from this tab. We set up the VL distance sensor using functions from this tab. And then we establish this D4 output pin, which is the pin that's gonna communicate from the uh, ESP device to the P1AM inputs on this terminal block. Then after the setup, we start the loop. We take a measurement for every loop um, using the VL sensor and store that in my distance. Then uh, we write, a reset function to, to make sure that the pin on the output of D4 is set low. That's the, the default communication to the P1AM if the can, uh, if the object is not detected near and less than the threshold. Then we have two if groups. 
the first if statement is saying if the distance is not zero. Well, when uh, the VL sensor is out of range, then it's gonna return a zero and we don't want to handle that. So we say, if we don't need to handle that, then we're gonna check, is my distance less than the trigger or the threshold of 10 centimeters? If so, we raise the flag. Then the next if loop is going to um, act on that flag. If the flag is high, then we're gonna write the output of D4 to be high and then we're going to ask the buzzer to make its chirping sound to indicate to the user uh, that the, the, the object was detected. So this line 32 indicates to the P1AM uh, PLC that the object was detected, and line 33 indicates it to the user, two separate uh, communications. Then we delay for 50 milliseconds, but, uh, but take note that this uh, chirp takes maybe 500 milliseconds. So we're, we're taking uh, the D4 to be a high position a little over half of a second, which is plenty of time for, um, for the P1AM uh, PLC to notice that the input has gone high. And this loop overall, uh, because I've tested, it runs around 50 Hertz. So 50 times a second, we have the, the opportunity to notice if the object has approached. That means if you turn the speed up all the way uh, and you have a small object, you probably can still detect if it comes within range of the sensor. Uh, the last line of the code is just to reset the flag to be low and then we jump back to the beginning of the loop. You can find the Arduino files to run this software in the Arduino folder of the MXCT conveyor GitHub repository. And you'll need to download each of these files and put them in a folder called 07.12buzzvl. And uh, that's the only way to get the Arduino program to recognize it.